Testing is a critical part of delivering high quality, reliable UI. However, if you test the wrong thing, you're at risk of actually creating bugs and the worst type, the type that may not even need to be fixed. Let's look at why interaction testing in the browser actually provides the most bang for buck for your UI tests. Let's dive in. Okay, so before we start, check out the tic-tac-toe tutorial on the React docs. We won't go through this tutorial here, but we will use the final state of the tutorial as our starting point for interaction testing. To show you how to use interaction tests, I wanna first show you the wrong way of testing this component using unit tests. Because when I write tests, my inclination is to write tests that feel like the code that I'm writing. And I wanna show you why that inclination can be particularly wrong with UI. Now, if I were unit testing this, I would probably open my app TSX file, find the board component and export that so we can send squares in directly via props and make a new stories file game.stories.tsx and then I'd start building out stories for my game in this case visual unit tests we'd have a default board with no squares and something like x wins with squares showing what happens when x wins now this isn't great and it's not great because it violates two important principles of testing one that private functions should be tested through public interfaces and two that test data should represent real world data. But instead, I've created a scenario where I can pass in data that's an impossible state. X can't play three turns in a row. Let's fast forward this to a particularly egregious test simulating a tie. I'll paste this in and at first blush, it looks totally reasonable, but the result is another impossible state. We see that the next player should be O, but if you look at the numbers, there are more O's on the board than there are X's. This state would never happen in a real game. And because it's wrong in this test, we may be inclined to fix it as a bug, even though a user would never see it. Let's stop doing things the wrong way and start doing them the right way. First, we'll paste in a basic template for a component. This time, instead of board, we're going to import the already exported component game. We export our component meta and a story. The rest is just TypeScript. Now, Storybook uses testing library for all its interaction tests. And we'll notice right away that we have a problem. It's not a rendering problem because the board renders and we can even play a game in side of Storybook. But testing library intentionally applies some virtuous friction by forcing us to query the DOM only by content available to assistive technologies. If we take a look at this element, we have nothing to grab it by. And because we've chosen to test like our users will use this app, we notice that all of these are just generic button. So let's fix that. Jump back into app, find the square component, add an index and an index type. And finally, we'll add an aria label to this element. Now, this will be a fairly complex name, so let's create a function for it and create it. Now, this function is going to do a little bit of math to generate some labels like this. Taken, space, x, column one, row one, or open space, column three, row three. Finally, we need to update our squares call to include this index. Okay, with that in place, we see our board with these new aria labels, which get read by assistive technologies. So now we can query by text that's available to all users. In Storybook, we use interactions to create stories from user events. So if we wanna create an X wins state, we apply a play function to that story. Play functions are async functions that have a context object that we'll take our canvas element from and set up a testing library canvas. Now we can query our canvas with the find by label text and then use our string open space, column one, row one. And once we have it, we can await a user event, in this case, click on that space. Let's save what we have so far and see what we get. We have an X wins story that uses our label text to click this first square. Unlike our previous attempt, we're actually simulating a game of tic-tac-toe using this game component. We can even carry on but let's not get carried away. So up to this point, we've created these visual tests or stories, but we haven't codified any of our expectations. Let's do that now by adding jest, specifically the expect function. Now we can add an expectation that at the end of this, we should expect the canvas element to find by text the canvas to get by text winner X. We expect this to be in the document. Now we see something interesting. In our X wins state, 
great. We play our interactions, but then we also see that this whole interaction has failed. Yes, we have an open space. Yes, we clicked on that open space, but we don't see winner X. And we can verify that visually. And common sense will tell us that's because X hasn't won yet. So let's add interactions to make that the case. My inclination is to pull this out into a function so that we're only repeating the numbers. We'll interpolate column and row and wrap this up into an async function. Call it find by position and it takes a column and number and applies those to the template string. Now we can call that with something a little bit more simple. Wait, find by position, one, one. And we'll just add seven more of these. So we'll click one, two, three, go to the next row, one, two, three, and then go to the final row. Let's save this and see what we did. Okay, so we click all of these open spaces until we eventually get to the point where we do see an X wins state. Congratulations, your first passing test. Now I want to show you one last thing and that's the play functions are composable. I'd like to take everything from this story that gets to an X win state and then add a go to move three interaction. And I definitely don't want to just copy and paste this test. So let's add a new story. Let's name this one X wins then returns to move three. Now we will copy this setup. There are ways to get around this, but none that wouldn't involve us writing a lot of TypeScript. Now, the key here is that we want to await the X wins dot play function. And here we can send our canvas element along to it. In fact, if we want, we can take the whole context object, which may be more robust. Now, if we save it just at this point, we'll have two tests that do exactly the same thing, which is a good start, but not what we want. Now, once this concludes, we need to create a new button for move three and get it using canvas.get by text go to move three. Once we have that, we can set up our final expectation. Now there's a number of ways that we could test this and a number of things that we could test, but here I'm just gonna text, test that O should be the next player again. Hit save and we should get a failure because winner X is still in play. But when we await a click to that element, our tests pass and we can see that we're back on move three. Now this was a long one, but we did cover a lot of ground. First, we learned that it's important to have a different testing strategy than a development strategy. When we think about writing tests for UI like a developer, well, we don't actually necessarily write the right types of tests, but interaction tests, specifically those using testing library, help us to get out of a developer mindset and into a user mindset. And you can't spell UI without you. Now, I know that this may have raised a bunch of questions for you about how to write interaction tests because we're focusing on this tic-tac-toe, but you may have questions about the feature itself. We have a video for you that will really help you understand the feature in depth and how to use it for all of your tests. I hope that you found this useful. If you did, give us a like and subscribe. That helps us a lot. I'm Chantastic. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Balloons?